choose to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt ring. Right, the bouncer's guilt ring. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. Andrew McCart, IFL TV. I'm here at the VIP gym. I think it's in Manchester. I'm close to Manchester, Mr. Great, Jamie. Greater Manchester. Greater Manchester area with Jamie Moore. Jamie, I'm back here Thursday for the workout with Chantel Cameron and Jack Catterall and all the rest of them. So I'll talk to you then about the, the fight dates that they've got coming up because it's an exciting couple, of, exciting couple of months ahead. But you've got a big heavyweight. A big heavyweight in Dave Allen. I've seen you've been training. Um, he's got a big fight this weekend against Fraser Clark. Yeah. Everyone loves a heavyweight scrap, man. So how's Dave Allen looking? Yeah, he's in, in great shape. He's uh, He's been down here for quite a few months, really. Now he's, um, He started off, he was bringing his lad, Joe Hayden, over to spar with Jack before Jack's last fight. And uh, so he was training here with us then. And then um, I'd, I've had, had like two and a half weeks away from the gym. And then I, got, I come back, he's been here nearly five weeks again. So um, so he's in great shape compared to compared to some of the times when he's been in the ring he's not been sort of in the in the greatest shape so he's not just physically in good shape though he's in good, he's in a good mental place as well so um i'm really excited for it we know when dave allen's in a good mental place we've seen him we've seen the lucas brown win we've seen the nick webb win and he does pack a punch whether it be the left hook to the body over or, or the overhand right he does carry power in both hands now fraser clark has got the experience in terms of the amateur experience yeah. dave allen's definitely got the experience when it comes to the pro ranks he's faced tony yoker dillian white yeah. Whoever, I'm probably missing a couple more off the top of my head, but he's faced these top top guys, David Price as well. Um, so he does have the, the not the experience in the professional ranks. Will that stand David in good in good stead going into this one? Listen, it should do, it and, and and that's the thing, you know. Fraser Clark's a terrific fighter. He's some great achievements in the amateurs, but the pros and amateurs are totally different. So so like as you say, Dave's well experienced in the pros, and um, and that's the plan is you know he, he can use those experiences um, to his advantage on the night. Here's the boys. All right. It's the heavy oh, yeah, all right. Uh, what do you want? What do you want? Hey. Who are you? Myvering bastard. <laughs> That's good, mate. It's not Nigel Travis for anyone watching. It's not him. <laughs> no, it's Jed. How many times have you been debugged by everyone? Um, about 500 times in all my life. I've been working with you about over 20 odd years. Yeah, I've known you. Eyes, lost my eyes. Yeah, there. Belly bad. Yeah. <laughs> over a nice sound. He's all right. Well, you make it. Right. Listen, I was going to ask for a job, Jimmy, but I'm not now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, well, yeah, the, the experience of Dave Allen going into this fight, obviously Fraser Clark does have that amateur experience, but yeah, yeah. Dave Allen does have the experience when it comes to them pro ranks, the small gloves, the crowds and whatnot. Yeah, and so so there's a big difference between the pros and the amateurs. Obviously, the obvious ones in, in, in the terms of the length of the fight and stuff like that, but you have to navigate around much yeah. differently and Fraser's very good, at, you know, he, he sets a high tempo and you can, you've seen that in the, in the fights what he's had now. Um, but with someone like Dave, when he's on on form and he's, he, you know, he can, he can carry that punch. Um, Jed, do you want to stop in, in, stop interrupting, please, mate? We're doing interviews. This is a professional business. Yeah, stop fucking about. Stop fucking about. <laughs> um, he, 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 you know, when when he sets his mind to it, like he has done for this training camp, he's a dangerous opposition for anyone. And uh, you know, he, like you talk about, for instance, he he, bought, he took Dylan White, the Dylan White fight, on such short notice. He wasn't in shape, and uh, and I know, you know. The, the result was went way against him, but the fact of the matter is, for him to even be able to get in there and compete is 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 a testament to his ability. What he's got, he's got all that experience under his belt now. So going in, you know, Fraser Clark's older mm. than than Dave Allen. Do you know what I mean? So inactivity is an issue in terms of him, him being active over the last couple of years, but. The most important aspect to me is his mindset. Mm. When he's got his mind on it, when he's got his mind on his job, he's, a, he's an handful for anyone. And he really has trained properly for this one. So, uh, so I'm looking forward to it, yeah. Obviously, Fraser Clark had that purse bid for the British title. If Dave Allen goes on to beat Fraser Clark, I mean, what does that do for his career? Can he go on and win that British title? Is that is that a possibility for him? Well, I think oh, his ambition now is he, he wants to get some big wins. and The biggest fight, the better, because he realises you know, he's, he's, he's no spring chicken. He's been around the block quite a few times. And over the years, you know, he's been a real big asset to British boxing. Even, you know, people... He'll have the negative comments to make about him, but what's happened over the years is he's created this like cult following where 
people love to watch him fight and and you know people re, people are really rooting for him to win this fight um, because he's a character mm. you know people like having him on, having him on the scene so um so you know it's, this gym's full of characters and and, and he's slotted in like like a duck to water he really has so uh so he's put the graft in and fraser clark is a is a favorite and rightly so but i tell you straight he's, he's got a great chance of winning i do want to talk about the other heavyweight fight at the weekend there there's a lot of controversy and uh, there's a lot of, there's the low blow there's the did daniel dubois quit with the jab coming over the top and um, just obviously you watched the fight uh I mean, it's a heavyweight fight, and we, me and you don't know what it's like to get hit by a heavyweight unless Dave Allen scalped you in the mouth, Jamie. Snap my well, <laughs> right there you go. Up. So it's like we don't know what it's like to be hit by a heavyweight. So again, the question I'm going to ask you before we talk about anything else, if you want to talk about it, is did Daniel Dubois quit in your eyes going with that jab coming over the top from Music? Listen, no, no one can ever say anything about um, someone quitting in that situation. You know, Usyk's um, terrific fighter, uh, and. I don't know if this is the case, but just say you 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 think if he's a right-handed southpaw, which a lot of the time people are, then uh, then the way he was delivered with that rotation, mm -hmm. it's like getting it with a backhand. Mm -hmm. So um, so you know, pe pe a lot of people, a lot of fighters even can can comment and go, you know, we quit, but no one knows what actually how he felt in that moment in time. So I don't like really throwing that sort of. Um, name out for people because we really don't know what the situation was like for him um the low blow was low was a low blow and that, that, that's you know i don't think there's any uh, any question about that and um you know there's, there's there's always these issues you know what actually so i've just put a comment on on jack's post um it's quite funny this um about his about his shorts because he was he was moaning before trying to put a picture on Instagram saying why can't I get my shorts in because he's got his daughter's name on, so I just put a comment underneath. He's put it on and you can't see his shorts and I put how come you can't see his shorts? Just taking a mic and everyone thinks it's like a cryptic thing about ah, Usyk's right, shorts right, or something right, like right. that, and like people are commenting underneath going like you know this is going to go under the radar. This people aren't going to get onto what this really means, but it doesn't even mean that. It's just it a bit of a, it's just a bit of a <laughs> behind it behind closed doors joke between me and Jack. Well, obviously, Tyson Fury, well, I'm gonna, before I talk about Tyson Fury and the possible matchup with that, obviously, you're a coach. It seems like the game plan or the blueprint to beat Usyk, if we're going off past fights, is go to his body. Now, we've heard spawn rumours with Bacoli out in Dubai that dropped him with a body shot and put, put him out the ring for five minutes. It seems the key is that body shot or going to the body, but it's catching him. Any, any fighter what's around long enough, eventually people start to work out a bit of a blueprint to, to how, how they can beat him. They see these little weaknesses. And and it looks like that could be a weakness, but people are you know people are talking about this because people are calling it a body shot, and from the angles I've seen, it wasn't a body shot. But you know, just say for instance, he is a bit weak downstairs. Then that's what happens. People start to to work out that okay, Usyk's weak downstairs. Now Tyson Fury's got so many different dimensions to his style. If he decides to go in there, um, if and when the fight happens, and walk Usyk down and just hunt his body and work him down he'll be able to do that because he is that versatile type of fighter where he'll be able to do that um i i i really can't see how Usyk with his dimensions and his size and stuff being able to compete with tyson fury i was gonna ask well you probably answered my question for me because i was going to ask if you're tyson fury watching that fight on saturday night sitting on your couch what was going what would be going through tyson fury's mind at this moment in time i'd be hugely confident looking at that i'd be really trying to chase that fight now no, and listen in all honesty, he should have been trying to chase that fight anyway, and he has been doing. We've seen. I, I, no one knows whose fault it is why the fight's not happened. It's obvious they've all wanted the fight, but for whatever reason, it's not happened. But so, so without what happened at the weekend, um, giving him encouragement to go, yeah, I want to chase that fight. You know, it's the biggest fight out there outside the Joshua fight in terms of um, making sure that we get an undisputed champion. Everyone, I, in an ideal world, everyone wants an undisputed champion. So. So, I feel I, I feel like it'll happen now. Probably because of what's happened at the weekend, it's more likely that that fight will happen early next year. Like I said, yeah, I'm back here Thursday. It's Tuesday in Manchester. This will probably go out tonight or early tomorrow morning. So I'm back here Thursday for the Jack Carroll and Chantel Camp. So I do want to talk about them. I'll get a nice chat with you about them. But because we're in Manchester, and the reason why I'm down here is the Liam Smith versus Chris Eubank Jr. rematch. You're going to be in the arena to watch it because um, you've got Dave Allen on the bill. I mean, mouthwatering again. I mean, the antics between... As a, as a boxing fan and as a media guy, I love the antics yeah, when, yeah, when yeah. two fighters are going at it. But what can, if you can give an opinion on this fight, what can it be? What is it? Listen, I, I just think that 
sometimes a fighter has your number. And I, I think Chris Eubank, Chris Eubank Jr.'s achieved a hell of a lot in his career in terms of coming from where people didn't ever think he would. You know, he, he's trying to fill big shoes mm. in, in terms of following his dad. And when that happens, rarely do you sort of live up to people's expe expectations. So he's probably not quite done what he wanted to do but nevertheless he's earned a hell of a lot of money and um, and he's made a good name for himself but Liam Smith's a phenomenal fighter and I don't think he gets the credit or respect he deserves and I think Chris Eubank Jr probably underestim un underestimated him before the first fight um, I understand why he took the rematch because in the back of his mind he'll probably be not thinking but hoping that he, he sort of took his eye off the ball i said this loads of times about liam smith liam smith doesn't lose the first few rounds he gives him away mm. he gives him away on purpose because he knows what he's doing he's reading his opponent's rhythm he's lulling lulling them into a false sense of security and then he and then he sneaks it on him I, I i love the way he fights i think it's i think i think it's um Tactically, it's really, really good. And, you know, he's one of them fighters, Liam, he knows him. He knows his weaknesses, mm. knows how to protect him, and he knows his strengths. And he doesn't veer away from it. He just does what he's good at. And uh, and I think Eubank might do a little bit better this time. He might get a little bit further in. But I think Liam eventually is going to break him down with body shots. I spotted Liam two rounds. And the way you described it is exactly what he done to me. He was figuring, it gave, gave me the first round thinking I was doing okay and then hit me with a body shot and put me on my knees. So yeah. this, I, is what, this is what he does. He, 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 makes, he makes the opponent think that he's a simple fighter. Mm. And then what he does is he starts he starts reading the rhythm and then he starts slotting his own stuff in between. Very, very clever fighter. Really. Definitely. Like I said to you, Jack Carroll's up against Linares October 24. First, yeah. is it? Chantal Cameron against Katie Taylor, the rematch in November 25th. 25th. Thank you very much. In Dublin, busy couple of months ahead coming up for you, for you, Jamie. You've got a young stable in there as well, some young fighters that we're going to be talking about on Thursday. So I'll probably get another chat with you. As always, I do appreciate your time and your invitation to come down to the gym, Jamie. So thank you so much, mate, and I'll see you Thursday. Cheers, and Thanks, mate. Thanks very much. You need to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never, never shut, shut up, Barry. Uh, must have been about 17, 16, 17. Win it their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 